Hello and welcome back to Feature Request the Game the Show, the show where you suggest features and mechanics for a game, and then I try my best to implement them. And yeah, sometimes your best isn't enough, but at least you can live with yourself, and at least you won't go to your grave never knowing your true capabilities, or your true self. I really wish this show could be a weekly deal, but in case you haven't noticed, our cosmic overlord accidentally dropped our planet into a pile of dog shit and then tried rinsing it off in a gutter, where it was dropped yet again and is now being eaten alive by gutter rats while everything everyone flushes down the toilet collects in its planetary open wounds. That, and try as one might to turn heartbreak into a fun and informative YouTube video, sometimes one must cry for a few more nights over the next few months to really heal. Last time we got this player up and running with a third person camera, complete with a changing focal length and speed lines for when the player is running. User Zoli commented a couple weeks ago, suggesting currency, item, skill, and dropping a banana grenade. Zoli also said, by the way, awesome video editing, wink -a face So I threw my thumb way up and gave a little love and said I would try something like being able to equip multiple items to scroll through that you can pick up and drop. And that's what I did, check it out. Alright, so if we run, we can pick up the sphere, and look, it goes to your hand, and then you can go grab that cube, and then you can grab that capsule, and you can scroll between them, and you scroll up, or you can scroll down, you can go back and forth, and it just loops through them endlessly, whichever direction you're scrolling in. But then you want to go grab this cube, and it's like, oh no, you only have three max inventories, so you have to hit E to switch these items. So let's say I'm like, uh, I fucking hate capsules, bro, I need this red cube. I hit E, and it swaps them out. And then later on, it's like I have a midlife crisis, and I'm just like, okay, well actually I really just hate spheres, so now I want to swap that out. And I got capsules again, just like back in it. So this is how I made all of that happen. First of all, we have a new FSM on the player called Items FSM. That's what this is right here. And we also have an empty game object on the player right there on the hand, which is uh, a child of the right hand joint. And it's just an empty game object, so we could put things there whenever we equip items. The other thing I added was this empty game object called a game manager, and it has uh, a Raymaker list on it, and it has this Playmaker FSM on it. The Playmaker FSM just has a get owner action, which just puts this game manager object as a global variable so our other FSMs will have access to it. I'm using this game manager object as a place to store variables because a lot of the times using a ton of global variables ends up becoming like a super messy process. So this is a way to kind of store them locally and being able to reference them from other places as well. This array maker list is called inventory. That's with a lowercase i. The type is game object. I don't have anything for prefill count and live update is checked. So we can see things pop in and out of it. Then we have these objects over here. We have a cube, let's see, hit F. We have a sphere, we have a capsule, and we have a red cube. And all of these have colliders on them. They all have their own, whatever their shape is. So the cube has a box collider and the capsule is a capsule collider, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and they're all set to is trigger, that is checked. Uh, that way you could kind of like pass through them. They all have this equip FSM on them and you'll see that this is an FSM template. So I'm using a template which allows me to make changes to one FSM that then makes changes across the board to any other object using that FSM. So to go into it, I can either hit edit right here or down here it says click to edit template. And so this is the template. You'll also see up here it says template. And in all of these objects, if I expand this, you'll see that they have a canvas and a text mesh. Uh, this is for when you wanna swap out items, there's a little text that pops up that says press E to switch. So this canvas, you could take a look at this rec transform and canvas, canvas scaler, um, all these kind of settings I have. This is for like the scale of things and the actual text has these settings. Now the reason I want to show you these settings is because it did take some finessing to kind of decide how big the text would be and kind of where to put it and also just finding the right quality or resolution of the text because by default it's like a really low shitty quality. So over here you have to mess with the character size and the font size. Um, finding a balance between these two 
is just up to your own preferences. The canvas also has an FSM on it. Um, I have a fine game object which gets the main camera from our scene and then a smooth look at which takes that main camera variable and says hey always be facing the main camera so that means the text will always be looking in our direction. Also quick note here this canvas render mode is set to world space which basically means that the text floats out in the world in the actual space of the game as opposed to being overlaid on top of the screen. Um, by default I think it's set to screen space overlay. And in the event camera, I have it set to our main camera, so that's where it gets rendered. So in the player, we have the items FSM, and it starts with an array list get, which has game manager set as the game object. I was able to just drag and drop this in since this player is actually in the scene. We don't really need to use variables. It's not a prefab, it's not being called in during runtime. So, and then the reference, we have it set to inventory, and then at index, we have this item equip index variable, uh, which basically looks at the list of things in that array maker list and whatever number that thing is, it will get that thing. So get item number five or get item number two or whatever, whatever. I set it to only have three items on our list. So if we go over here to game manager, right? You'll see that here's our list, this inventory. Um, if I set this prefill count to let's say three, save, it's gonna have these three slots, but you'll notice that it says item zero, item one, and item two. That means the first item is actually called item zero. Second is one and third is two. So that's important to remember when you're calling on the index of an array list. Uh, I'm setting this back to zero though, hit save. So when this first kicks off, if you look at this variables list, this item equip index, it's set to zero initially. Um, this is gonna be changed later on because as we kind of scroll through items, we want this variable to change, which will equip whatever item we've scrolled to. So we just say here, the type of variable we're getting is a game object and we're storing it in a variable called current equip. So it gets that item at this index, whatever number it is, and it stores it here in this current equip variable. Then we have a set parent, which takes that object that we just got from our current equip and it sets its parent as the object in hand. So basically it puts that current equip item in that little hand object, this thing. And then this reset local position or reset local rotation, that's kind of, I haven't really like decided on that yet because right now I'm just using like these simple shapes, but if you're gonna have it set like a gun or a sword or whatever the hell you wanna hold, there's kind of like a specific way of holding those things, you know? So in those cases, you'll be more intentional about setting the reset local position and local rotation. After that, there's an array list activate game objects, which basically deactivate all the game objects in our inventory. See right here, it says activate, that's not checked. That means that they're being deactivated. Then after that, we have an activate game object, which then only activates our current equip. All of them are deactivated, except for the one that's currently being used. After that, we have a get axis. The axis name is mouse scroll wheel. This name comes from the input manager in your project settings. And I set the multiplier to 10 to make it really sensitive. And I'm storing this variable in a variable called scroll float. Then I have this float compare that looks at that scroll float and it says, hey, if you're less than zero, you're gonna scroll down. And if you're greater than zero, scroll up, which basically means, are you a one or a negative one? So this scroll down and scroll up are transitions right here. We have scroll up and scroll down. So if we scroll up, it takes us right here where I have an array list get relative. The description down here for array list get relative says, gets an item for a playmaker array list proxy component using a base index and a relative increment. This allows you to move to next or previous items granularly. So it looks at our inventory list and then starting at this index, the item equip index, and this increment is set to one. So it moves up one position. That means it gets the next thing. Uh, we store the result in our current equip variable and then the result index is item equip index. So it's basically updating what our current item equip index is. And when you scroll down, I have the same thing here, except this increment is set to negative one, which means it goes back a position. Then over here, we have this state with a global transition that says try again. This is for later on when you switch out an item, we get sent here. Yeah, I could have put this try again global transition uh, on this state, but I had an extra state just in case I wanted to put uh, something else that happens when you switch out items. So now here on all of our items, we'll take a look at the equip FSM template. So we start with this waiting to be grabbed, which has a trigger event that basically says, hey, if you touch anything with the player tag on it, then do this thing. So it sends the event check free space, which sends off to the next state, but it also has this store collider um, and it stores it in the variable called player. So now it knows what the player is, which game object to reference. Um, so over here, after that's happened, it says check player inventory, uh, which just stores itself as a variable. Then an array list count, which checks how many objects are currently in this inventory and then it stores it in this inventory count variable. 
then an int compare which looks at that inventory count variable and it compares it saying, hey, if the inventory count is equal to three, then I'm gonna take you to the switch option. But if it's less than, you could just add the object. So basically it's like, hey, if you have three objects, then you're gonna have to switch. Uh, but if you have less, it'll just add it. So let's say we have some free space, it'll take us up to this grabbed state. And in this grab state, we have an array list add, which says we're gonna add this game object to that inventory array maker list. Um, and then a send event, which is specifically targeting a game object FSM. And the game object it's targeting is the player. And then specifically it's saying the items FSM of the player. And it's sending the event called try again. Uh, which is this thing, remember? So it gets sent right here, and it just kind of gets sent back right here. Um, so it's sort of a way of running this state once more. But let's say the player's inventory was maxed out at three, so we'd go over to this switch option. And in the switch option, we're using get position, which gets the position of this item, and it stores it in this vector three called item on floor underscore v3. The space is set to world. Then we have a get child, which says get the canvas of this object, and it says activate game object, and it activates the canvas. So you'll see up here, we have these canvas and new text objects. They're all deactivated, and you could deactivate them by clicking these on and off. And we want them off because we don't want to see them initially. But right here, we have this activate game object when we're ready to switch. So that's what this activate game object does. It activates the canvas and we have this recursive set. And recursive basically means it'll activate things that are also a child of that canvas. And I have this reset on exit. So the moment we leave the state, it'll go away. Then we have a get key and a bool test, which just checks when we hit the E key. Uh. Both of these are set to every frame. So when you do hit E, it goes over to item switched. Uh, first we have a bull flip, which just resets that E key. Then a get FSM game object, which looks to the player to see what the player's currently equipped item is. And it stores it in a variable here called last equipped. Um, so that's its like most recent equipped item. And then we have an array list remove, which basically says, hey, that last equipped item, look where it exists on that inventory array maker list and take it out. Then a set parent, which takes that last equipped and sets its parent to nothing, which is another way of saying it just gets put down. Then a set position, which takes that last equipped and it sets it to the item on floor vector three that we got earlier. So it basically swaps the position of that item. Then an activate game object, which activates the last equipped item. So you can actually see it there on the floor. Then a send event, which looks at that last equipped object that we just dropped and tells it to go back to the start, uh, which is for it, it would be over here which has a little wait and then it sends it back to the start state. Um, this little wait for when an item gets dropped is honestly just a precautionary measure because there was some weird things happening and uh, <laughs> just trust me. Um, but yeah, anyways, back over here to the item switch thing. After we send it back to start, there's this next frame event which takes us up here to grabbed after switch, which basically says now that the player has space, we're gonna add this to the player. So we have this array list add, which adds this game object to that inventory array maker list. Then a get FSM int, which looks at the player's items FSM and says, okay, what's that item equip index? I wanna know what your current equipped item is. Then an array list swap items, which swaps out whatever the item was in the item equip index with this just added to the index variable uh, that's set up here from this array list add. And then finally at the bottom, there's a send event, which tells the player um, to go back to that try again thing we have up here. So when you click on it, it's that try again, and it gets sent back over here. <laughs>